In Romford Cemetery in East London, there are literally thousands of tombstones. On the day I visited, it was a freezing cold winter's day, and I jogged around the cemetery to try to warm myself up. I wasn't paying attention to any of the tombstones, but for some reason, and I don't know why, I was drawn to this one particular tombstone. It was not a big or unusual tombstone, it did not have any elaborate decorations, it was just a normal tombstone on its own amongst thousands. But for some reason, a reason I can't explain, I was drawn to this particular tombstone and the tragic story that lay behind it. Hello and welcome to Deep Cover. We cover true crime and other unusual and thought-provoking content. Today we will be looking at the case of Scott Young, who was only 14 years old when he was tragically killed in Romford, East London. I had not previously heard about Scott's case until I went with my friend to the cemetery in Romford. She had wanted to pay her respects to a relative and I went along to keep her company. Foolishly I had gone only in a t-shirt so I was feeling pretty cold. Whilst my friend was paying her respects to her relative, I decided to go for a jog around the cemetery to try and warm up a bit. I wasn't paying much attention to any of the graves, however strangely one particular tombstone drew my attention. For some reason it stood out to me amongst the thousands of headstones. I really can't say why Scott's grave stood out so much. Perhaps it was because it has his picture on it, but then many of the headstones have pictures on them and some are expressly designed to draw attention to themselves with elaborate and ornate decorations. Perhaps it was because Scott's grave was well tended, with fresh flowers on it, appearing as if it was a new grave, but on closer inspection, Scott had passed away over 20 years ago in 2002. So I'm looking at the tombstone, I was able to see that he was, he was clearly a young man, had a loving family, and tragically he died at 14 years of age. So that piqued my interest. And I looked up his tragic story. So what essentially happened to Scott is that he'd been walking down the road with his friends and he'd been approached by two young men, a Yannick Atutu and one other, and he'd been accused or so uh, Atutu claimed that Scott had bullied his brother the week before. That's what he claimed at court. And that caused a dispute between the two of them. A tutu lashed out and punched Scott. And Scott tried to get away from the assault, ran into the road and was tragically hit by two cars and was taken to hospital. But the doctors were unable to save him and unfortunately he died. Scott was actually chased into the road just outside the Romford Greyhound Stadium. There's a plaque dedicated to Scott just outside the stadium. Before I provide the details of what happened to Atutu at his trial and sentencing, I just wanted to ask you for a small favour. Through this channel, I hope to raise money for victims of crime and other criminal justice initiatives. Whilst the channel is small, we can't do that. If we grow to at least a thousand subscribers, a minimum of 20% of any income the channel generates will go to charities dedicated to the victims of crime. One of the charities I hope to give to is the Ben Kinsella Trust. The trust was set up after the murder of Ben Kinsella in 2008. Ben was murdered when he was 16 years old, stabbed to death by three youths in a horrific act of senseless violence. Ben had nothing to do with gang violence and he was a bright and popular young man. He was simply the victim of an unprovoked attack. The trust was set up by Ben's family and it campaigns to prevent knife crime. There is a link below to their website. If you help me to get over 1,000 subscribers, I will be able to start donating to Ben's trust. Your small action of subscribing to the channel may indirectly help to save someone's life. I thank you for listening this far and I thank you for your help. Atutu and his co-defendant, who's not named because he was 17 at the time, Atutu was 18 at the time, they were charged with manslaughter. The reason why Atutu was not charged with murder, the more serious charge, is because the prosecution felt they could not establish that Atutu had intended to kill Scott, but that his illegal actions, namely assaulting Scott, had caused Scott's death. The allegation by Atutu that Scott had bullied Atutu's brother does not appear to be well founded. The judge when sentencing Atutu said that Scott had done nothing to provoke the attack. So it seems that either Atutu had mistaken Scott for someone else or he'd simply lied about Scott bullying his brother. There are some sources online that say that Atutu had previous convictions or was arrested for robbery and there's even one online article that says that Atutu had in fact been trying to rob 
Scott, a 2-2 and his co-defendant, attempted to defend the case, claiming that they weren't guilty of manslaughter. It's not clear on what basis that they argued that they were innocent, given that it appears that a 2-2 accepted that he had punched Scott. It may have been the case that he argued that his, his punch hadn't been the cause of Scott's death, namely the cause of Scott's death was him running into the road. Nevertheless, what really sticks out about this case is the fact that a 2-2 was only sentenced to three years in prison. And as you will imagine, Scott's parents were extremely upset about this and they started a campaign to try to have the sentence or generally the sentences for this type of offending to be increased. They started a petition. The petition got 40,000 odd signatures and was presented in Parliament by the local MP, Andrew Rosendale. The purpose of the petition and the motion in Parliament was to try to put pressure on the government to review the sentence and try to introduce law to make the sentences more appropriate in such cases. After the petition, however, it doesn't seem like anything really came of it. Uh, there doesn't seem to have been any follow-up or any any sort of review. That's clear from the fact that obviously it's been 20 years and still similar types of sentences are still being handed out. What caused particular outrage alongside the just the three-year sentence was the fact that a tutu was going to be eligible for parole after only a year of his sentence. There's no follow-up as to what's happened to a tutu after he was released, what happened to him, has he committed further offences, was there any reconciliation between him and the family, was there any form of apology. He had his trial, he pleaded not guilty at trial, so uh, there was clearly no contrition, no apology, no regret, on the face of it no remorse about his actions. Was he supervised, has he committed further offences, has, has he become a constructive member of society? I'm sure for Scott's parents, although the tragedy of their son's loss must be absolutely devastating is something that I'm sure they will never fully recover from. The fact that the flowers are still fully tended 20 years down the line attests to that fact. But I suppose if they were reassured in some way that some good had come out of this situation, that Tutu had gone onto a path, that he became a constructive member of society, perhaps that might bring them some peace. I don't know Scott's parents and I, I don't know how they're feeling about it. I don't know whether they still feel that sense of anger and injustice at the sentence. But as a parent, I would have thought it would be extremely difficult to lay those feelings to bed. And where the world has moved on, seemingly, there's no follow-up, no further commentary, no discussion about the case, no apparent change in the law. There was just some pleasant words spoken by a member of parliament, I'm sure you would carry a strong sense of injustice no matter how many years have passed. And the fact that similar things still keep on happening and similar low sentences keep being handed out and re-offenders committing the same offences over and over again, I imagine might make you feel even more angry at the system. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think the three year sentence with a tutu being released on probation after one year is the right outcome? Do you think prison ever works in these type of situations? Or do you think a tutu should have had a much longer sentence? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this content, please like and also subscribe.